you know, I had a friend of mine that came to me the other day, and he said that his son told him that he wanted to quit the football team. Now, this kid's been playing football all his life. He's got to the 11th grade, and now he decided, hey, I don't want to play football anymore. And he asked me what, you know, what should he decide to do? Now, again, this kid has been playing all his life. He has potential to receive a scholarship and a, a lot of athletic prowess, but he's, you know, going through the typical teenage, uh, you know, endeavors in terms of, you know, puberty, finding yourself, you know, peer pressure, those kind of things like that. And the father's just extremely frustrated because they put so much over the years into training and sacrificing everything, and all of a sudden we got an abrupt stop. And he has not seen the kids show any kind of attitude towards quitting before and everything. And he just is clueless as why all of a sudden this kid wants to stop. And he wants to listen to what his son is saying, but he also is like, look, what, you know, can I just let him quit like that? So he came to me as my, as my opinion on it. And here's what I had to say. Uh, before I get started, I want to let you know, I am Deontay Bird. Make sure you, should go, you subscribe to my, my YouTube channel, Change the Live, hosted by your truly Deontay Bird, where we talk about motivation, personal development, and uh, professional development as well. We got a show streaming every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So make sure you check us out, Change the Live, hosted by your truly Deontay Bird. Easiest way to subscribe, hit that blue man in the bottom right hand corner. And here's the deal when my buddy came to me talking about his son, and he was saying that the young man had. You know, he doesn't want to do this particular thing anymore. And I asked him very, you know, very honestly, is what do you think about it? As a father, what do you think about it? He said, I really didn't want to let my son quit. And he said, the reason, you know, I asked why. And he said, the reason being because I really don't think he understands what he's doing. And this is the key thing as far as a parent. Is when we look at our child, we want to encourage our children to think. We want to encourage our children to make decisions. The thing about it is with our children, they're so young. They aren't experienced enough in life to understand the ramifications of some of their decisions. Now, uh, basic decision we're talking about where it's not really nothing too, you know, too severe. Uh, cold day outside, you forget to wear your jacket. Forget to take your raincoat. Um, you forgot maybe come to school with some pencils and stuff. You may got some kind of consequence with doing that, but it's not huge consequences. But if you make a decision that whatever comes from it and everything, you may not get in trouble from it. They may not get in trouble from it, rather, but it can affect their future, you know, one, five, ten, fifteen years down the road. You got to kind of hold up with that and everything. And you have to be realistic. If your child is mature enough to understand the ramifications of their decisions, that's fun it's fun spot for a parent to be in. Because there are a lot of parents, they have different views on the whole subject, but they'll say that, you know, it's their decision. They don't want to do it and everything. But again, you can easily be in a situation a year or two from that, and then your child is saying, man, I wish I hadn't quit last year. I wish I would have, you know, kept sticking with it and everything. And as a parent, you got to be realistic about what you're going to let them have those learning moments on. Now, again, if you're sitting there forcing somebody to do something and they don't want to do it and you put them out there and then they just like, hey, I'm not, my actions, you know, are not going to, you know, uh, continue to do it, that's a whole different conversation. But me personally, I wouldn't push, I wouldn't let my child just make a decision that they want to up and quit something until they show me they really don't want to do it. Because words are one thing. Actions are a whole different thing. Now your child, you your child tell you they don't want to go to practice or they don't, you know, want to be no uh, longer member of the chess club and they've competed over years and now they want to top chess players in the whole state or the whole region. Uh and all of a sudden they don't want to do it. Absolutely not. We can't do that. Because at the end, it may be something that, you know, they may be going through. Now you got to sit here and be, you know, put your that psychology hat on again. What's causing this? You know, did they lose a match? Is somebody bothering them? Uh, they have certain stresses. Maybe, you know, uh, a girl or a boy, something like that. They're throwing things off at your child. They got your child thinking a certain way. And as a parent, you got to try to decipher through that. Because once you get them back into that particular situation, they go back to practice and everything, they're good to go. Now your child get out there and they, their actions are showing they don't want to be there. They're not participating in things like that. That's a whole different thing. But I'm not really too quick on somebody telling me or a child, one of my children telling me they don't want to do something. And we just stop. Because, again, a lot of times it's usually some kind of temporary issue that can be fixed as opposed to us sitting there making a long-term decision or making a long-term solution off a temporary problem. And I'm not too fond of recommending anybody do that kind of thing. I'm more so about deciphering what's causing this problem. 
what is the cause of this? So let's just try to make a quick solution. What's causing it? Let's fix the cause and move from there. Now, again, your child may have lost all total desire in doing everything and stuff like that. But that usually doesn't happen just overnight, you know? And if you uh, have been reading your child, looking at your child, you've probably seen some signs. Would you always see that? No, I wouldn't say that and everything. But typically, if you're active and you're looking at your child and seeing behavior, seeing different things changing, because people do evolve during certain things. You might have a child that's deep in athletics, next thing you know, they're in the music. They go all in the music, next thing you know, they may want to, you know, get some Lego box and then they all in the engineering. People change, people evolve and everything, and it does happen. I totally get that part. But typically, you have to be realistic about, you know, the certain things that your child is making these decisions on. A lot of times, they make quick decisions on certain things because they encountered some kind of difficulty, some kind of uh, some kind of adversity where they're like, hey, I don't really want to deal with this right now. It's not that they want to deal with the situ uh, the actual situation being a sport, the club, whatever, the job, whatever they're doing. They don't want to dis deal with that temporary or current adversity situation. Okay, cool. I still want to play, but I don't want to deal with the adversity that goes along with it. And I think a lot of times as a parent, you can be proactive to find out. So again, uh, which decisions should you let your child make and everything? I, I'm very, I'm okay with letting your child make a lot of decisions that have short-term consequences. Like I said, again, you knew it rained outside. You should have grabbed the rain car. I let you going to get wet. But would I let you sit here and just say, no, I don't necessarily want to, you know, take on this particular project because I'm tired of doing it. And you've been working for it for years and doing certain things. I think we need to kind of slow down what's going on here and everything. And when we have these conversations, remember what we always talk about, the two key points of communicating, giving and receiving. As a parent, you are in charge. As a parent, you are the one that's calling the shots and everything like that, too. We want to get sure our children know at the end of the day that you, we are in charge, but we also want them to know what, that we respect what they think, how they feel, and who they are. We do not want to show them no kind of disrespect. As an individual, as a child peer, we're like, you're going to do this, that, and I don't give a damn with you. We can't do that. Because what happens is now the communication channel is off and everything. Still be the leader. Still be the parent. Still be the one calling the shots. But still, do not forget about the respect aspect of it. And have those kind of conversations. Find out what's going on and everything. I think a lot of times, we as parents want to talk to our kids instead of with our kids. And though that brand of conversation and that brand of communication really doesn't bring a lot out of anything. It just, you know, you know, creates a lot of ordering. You know, I had enough of that when I was in the military. So I just would advise parents to kind of just make sure that you have knowledge of your kids, their attitude what's going on in school as much as possible. And also that, you know, reaching out uh, to them. To them, you know, that, that those teenagers are real funky because, again, they're finding themselves and the child should be always up on you. Now they just don't want to deal with you anymore and everything. So it's not going to come with doing that. But again, Think about the impact of the decisions that they're making. Is it going to be a short-term result or impact from it, or it can be something that's devastating? You know, again, you know, kids been on a college prep program all through high school, elementary, high school. They get to a month before the senior year or a month in, and senior decide, I don't want to do this right now. What caused that? What can we do to have a conversation? Let's see where we at and try to, you know, navigate it instead of we don't want to be bar, 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 bar. And the more we, the louder we get, the more aggressive we get, the more deaf our child gets, and it never goes to nowhere. And it happens all the time. You got parents and children relationship strain because most of the time, as a root, it was a temporary problem, but there were too many permanent decisions were made behind it. So the challenge I want to give all parents is try to be as proactive as possible, having conversations with your kids and everything. Uh, no, you're not going to see eye to eye. You know, everybody has an independent brain. A lot of things I'm pretty sure they are like you with, but a lot of things they are not like you with. So make sure, you know, you, you keep those, you know, those part, those points of communication, giving and receiving in the fold, and uh, just keep talking. Just keep talking. But again, like I said, we don't want to make any kind of long-term or permanent decision on temporary problems. Again, this Change Live, hosted by uh, Deontay Burton from Change Live, hosted by yours truly, Deontay Burton. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Well, we talk about uh, motivation, personal development, and uh, professional development. Again, the easiest thing to do, hit that blue man in the bottom right-hand corner. Take care of yourself and talk to you soon.